Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are doing another video for you guys. Um, this is going to be um, a forecast of what's to come for 2021, as well as we're going to be talking about the conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter going into Aquarius and how this is going to affect uh, your sign, as well as, uh, like I said, going into a forecast of what's to come for all 12 months. So let's get to it. Um, Scorpio. Um, a lot of people don't really have this understanding of exactly what uh, or how big uh, this Jupiter and Saturn conjunction in Aquarius is. Um, I guess the easiest way to explain it is uh, Saturn and Jupiter are the biggest planets aside from the Sun. Um, and it takes roughly about 20 to 30 years for it to transition into all signs. Um, the difference here is that we also are experiencing Jupiter Saturn going into a different element. So in the past, I want to say from the 1800s up until now, we've been in Earth energy, meaning there's been conjunctions, but only in the Earth signs, which was uh, Virgo, uh, Taurus, and then Capricorn. So we're going from uh, Capricorn or, or Jupiter and Saturn sitting in the Capricorn sign going into Aquarius, which is an element of air, which is a completely different family of element. Uh, so there is a massive, uh, massive change that is going to affect everyone on different levels, um, but globally as well. Uh, so like I said, from the 1800s up until now, it's been sitting in Earth energy. Uh, so it's been the massive expansion of building, you know, of um, <clears throat> creating anything that has to do with uh, with Earth, uh, basically. So we've experienced, um, like I said, the building, the rat race of, of, you know, people trying to grow within their fields, within their careers, etc. Um, and then we go to a little bit more back. Um, which the Saturn conjunction uh, with uh, Jupiter happened um, in the element of fire, which was around the time that we experienced um, wars, where we experienced um, aggression and, you know, taking, taking things by force, uh, colonization and all of that. Uh, and then we go a little bit more back and we look at the conjunction that happened with uh, Jupiter and Saturn in the sign of water which was the Renaissance time, which is where the poets, a massive explosion of painting, uh, people tapping into their creative outlook, their the emotional, the imagination. Uh, around the time, we also had, uh, you know, everybody traveling by boat, by water. So again, um, that's kind of where, you know, how you can see the different transitions. And again, like I said, uh, going into a different element takes uh, Saturn and Jupiter about 200 years. So Again, I think that this is a very pivotal moment for everyone in humanity because our kids or even the kids of our kids won't experience such major transitions um, of, you know, Jupiter and Saturn going into a different element until 200 years from now. So again, this is major, you guys. Aquarius is all about thinking ahead, thinking in the future, uh, massive explosion when it comes to... Um, you know, scientists and science um, uh, really progressing. Um, this is all to do with, uh, you know, the new age. Uh, this is all to do with uh, people transitioning from like everyday working in offices to working from home for some. Um, this is, you know, people starting their own businesses and, uh, you know, Aquarius grows and expands with w when they have, you um, their freedom. So again, a lot of major expansion there. For you, Scorpio, um, Venus will be in your ascendant. Um, and then Venus goes into your second house, driving your creative side, empowering you. Um, also, uh, second houses have to do with finances. So major uh, growth and expansion there in your second house, which is with finances, money, tangible, um, as well as um, Mars is in your sixth house, important to stay away from any type of drama. Um, and staying away from conflicts is going to be very important in the beginning of the year for you, uh, only because you don't want to, you don't want to really 
allow people to get the best of you. <clears throat> Mars is aggression. So again, keep that in mind. Um, also, the need to take care of your health is going to be highlighted uh, sometime in this year to come, 2021. For some of you guys, this is changing routine, uh, changing um, some type of uh, betterment for you and for your health. Uh, around this time, we can experience having like uh, certain uh, health issues arise, but it's only because um, it's necessary to deal with it now so that in the next coming years, uh, you're balanced and you're stronger. So again, um, keep an eye out for that. Uh, we're also having uh, Jupiter sitting in your fourth house for some spiritual awakening is happening here a lot of a lot of you guys are going to be experiencing being able to see things from a very different perspective this could be uh even changing certain lifestyles um for others of you this is uh changes within your inner circle as well um with higher learning as well some of you guys may find yourself going back to school while for others it could be that you get uh, a momentum opportunity here in regards to your career that ba may be necessary for you to get some type of uh, learning, some type of education, um, or uh, like, you know, it, it doesn't have to be going back to college. It could just represent taking like uh, some type of course or something that's going to help you um, make way for better things for you. Um, as well as uh, improving relationships with siblings and relationships in general. So for a lot of you guys, because the fourth house is activated here, um, anything that has to do with family dynamic, everything that has to do with, like I said, uh, relatives, siblings, uh, even a mother figure, uh, for some of you guys, there may be a situation that arises uh, where there is a need for... I don't want to say a, I don't want to say it's a conflict, but a mother figure could be a, something that comes up around a mother figure. So this could be uh, in many different forms for some of you guys, you're already experiencing this. But what they're telling you here, it's going to be very important um, to really take on the loving approach to communicate in a very loving way, even if you feel like you're at your wit's end. Uh, like I said, with the mother figure or something that has to do with that. For others of you, siblings is going to be very important, especially if there's been like some type of distancing or you stop communicating with certain uh, brothers or sisters. There is a healing phase that's, uh, that's going to be unfolding for you where there is a need to address certain traumas from your past uh, that are connected with the family dynamic that is going to bring a lot of healing for you guys, um, a lot of awareness uh, moving forward. Um, so again, traumas uh, come to surface uh, to finally release toxic traits or behaviors that we may be carrying that perhaps has been greatly affecting your partnerships or relationships as well. Um, and also awareness of self-sabotaging traits that... Um, that you have a tendency of either, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, react in a certain way. Uh, for some of you guys, this could be uh, the fear of letting people get in a little bit too close. Uh, there is some type of uh, fear there that is going to be coming to surface for you to deal with to be able to be able to go into the next cycle in your life more grounded, more healed, uh, more wise, more than anything. So, um, and all to do with limiting beliefs. Uh, for some of you guys, this could represent a multitude of things. For some, it could represent um, it could represent uh, becoming aware of you know uh, becoming aware of things that or actions that we have a tendency of doing on a subconscious level that we don't really think about uh, that that is very connected to past traumas. Like I said or that are very connected to things that you experience in early childhood. Um, so uh, a lot of transformative energy for you, Aquarians. Obviously, the conjunction is happening in your sign. And, you know, this this is something that is going to be very important. I think for a lot of Aquarians, you're already feeling the shift. Um, the best advice I can give you is, uh, again, I don't know if you guys know, but this past couple of years we've been experiencing the conjunction of jupiter and saturn in the sign of capricorn so i've you know firsthand 
have felt this transition. Um, it's going to feel wild, you guys. It's going to feel like a roller coaster. For some of you guys, it's going to feel like you're being pulled towards different directions. Um, the best thing you can possibly do is stay focused on what you're trying to achieve and make priority or pretty much manage your priority. Uh, that's going to be something very, very important because it's going to feel very busy for you guys, okay? All right, my lovely. So, um, all right, Scorpios. So let's get into... Let's get into what's to come for you guys. Um, I'm going to be pulling out two cards for each month, representing what's unfolding or what's coming to you. Um, sorry about the lash peel. I was confusing uh, Scorpio with Aquarius uh, when I was saying about the transition that you're going to be experiencing. Um, okay, so let's get into it. Spirits, what are the messages for Scorpios? Uh, sun, moon, sun, moon, and rising. Give me 12 sets of 12 sets of cards representing each month for 2021 for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Yeah, what they're telling me is that um, the beginning of the year, I want to say from January all the way to March, there's a lot of healing that's going to be happening with you guys. Um, this could be if you are currently dealing with um, health issues, there's going to be some situations that, okay, let me pull out some cards. There's going to be some situations that uh, are going to be unfolding almost for us to really, for us to really, uh, deal with those past traumas, uh, family dynamics, uh, misconnections uh, with family and siblings that is going to be very highlighted. But again, what they're saying here is that a lot of healing um, past grudges even, um, you know, are going to be unfolding. But this is a positive thing because this you're releasing yourself from that type of energy as well as you're releasing yourself from certain karmic cycles that you continuously have been put through in the past so very positive here okay so we have january february march april may june july august september October, November, December. All right, Scorpio. All right, so for January, Scorpio, we have the full card and the seven of swords. Um, I, I feel that this is uh, very highly connected to what they were saying about having to address certain issues that are going to come up for you guys. Um, where I feel for some of you guys, it could be like working through connections with siblings. This could be brothers. This could be sisters. Uh, things that have been done in the past that perhaps you kind of suppressed. Uh, you've never really spoke about, but those feelings are still there. Um, and, you know, the fool is taking a new path. So I feel that for January, you guys are going to be tested in the sense of the Seven of Swords represents sneakiness. It represents um, deception, right? But I feel that this is uh, more to do with you're going to be pulled towards uh, almost crossroads in regards to this specific connection or this specific uh, situation about a family dynamic that you're going to have to address in January where you can ignore it uh, you can ignore it and not want to deal with it only to find yourself uh, dealing with that throughout the year of 2021. So again, the Seven of Swords could just represent um, you not being honest with yourself or not speaking your truth. Uh, with the full card, you're going into a new cycle. The advice here is to speak up, Scorpio. Speak on things that you feel like you've been carrying for a very long time. Um, 
be honest with others because it's being honest with yourself and releasing this energy is pushing you through uh, to be able to um, raise your vibration or go into the new year with with stronger, higher vibrations, uh, aligning yourself to your self-purpose or to your life's purpose. Now, for the month of February here, we have the Ten of Cups and the Queen of Cups. Uh, sorry, the uh, Queen of Wands. So for a lot of you guys, um, this is a restoration of, you know, healing the Ten of Cups, emotional fulfillment, uh, feeling more feeling more empowered, feeling more confident in yourself. Perhaps December and January are going to be a bit emotional for you. And I finally see you coming into your own in February, being more uh, confident in yourself, like I said, and perfect harmony within um, within your home life. Uh, very connected. I feel that this healing, this healing situation that is coming through very strongly in regards to family members, is going to be very positive because it's um, it's going to be more harmonious type of energy for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that are single. Uh, you may feel more empowered and more inclined uh, to do some type of like rejuvenation, some type of. Uh, getting a makeover, anything that is on a physical aspect. I feel that you guys are taking steps uh, to renovating yourself or revamping your energy. Now for March here, we have the Two of Swords and the Four of Cups. So for some of you guys, this could be, um, March could be a month where there is a decision, a decision that needs to be made for some of you guys. This could be in regards to relationships for others. This could be in regards to finances and how you make money. Remember, um, the second house is always about tangible um, physical money and also your third house here being activated and the sixth house. Uh, so it could feel like there is a, a need to make a decision uh, confused for some of you guys. For some of you guys, it could be an opportunity that comes in uh, in regards to uh, growing in your career or in your field or where you work. Um, but it's almost a feeling like it's not exactly what you want it. So it could be that they don't uh, they don't give you the raise or give you um, higher pay right off the bat in the beginning of this transition. So this could be you feeling like, I'm not sure if I want to take that opportunity or not. Uh, but with the Four of Cups here, the Four of Cups is a representation of the universe giving or providing, but you not being completely, like it doesn't come at, or it the opportunities don't come exactly the way you would hope or you would expect. Nonetheless, it's still a blessing. So what Spirit is telling you, if you feel that for the month of March, you are you know, having to make a choice between two things, two jobs, two opportunities. Um, take the one that not necessarily pays you the most, but that you're most excited about because long term, remember Saturn is there and Saturn is about putting that extra work, that extra, uh, you know, the extra work going the extra mile it's not going to come easy but when you're finally getting to the point of manifestation it blesses you very strongly so again it could come as as an example the ideal job or the perfect job you've been trying to get it comes through unfortunately it, they don't want to pay you exactly what you're wanting because perhaps you don't have experience or because perhaps they're wanting to see if you're able to even uh, if you're able to even deliver, basically. So what they're saying is take the opportunity, even though it feels a bit restrictive, and this could be Saturn energy as well, even though it feels a bit restrictive, nonetheless, it will play out to your benefit. So again, keep that in mind. Now for April here, we have the Star card and the Eight of Cups. So Star card is all about, again, revamping. This is illumination. This is wishes coming true and being able to move forward. I feel that April for a lot of you guys, this is going to be uh, an emotional month, but an emotional month in a positive way where there's a lot of gratefulness. There's a lot of positivity around you and you're really starting to see the light. You're really starting to see the path that you're wanting to take or that you're on um, with more of a grateful heart. Uh, the star card symbolizes being able to see a wish coming true with the eight of cups, being able to move on 
uh, to a better to better situation, better circumstances. Now, for the month of May, we have the Six of Cups and the Five of Pentacles. For some of you guys dealing with children or dealing with um, uh, children in general, for some of you guys, uh, this can also represent having the need uh, to make uh, your children, if you have children, make your children a priority. Uh, perhaps around this time frame is when you feel like you're being extremely busy or you're being pulled towards different directions, working a lot or working long hours, and there is a need for balance here. There is a need for you to uh, provide more time or provide uh, more more alone time with your children, spending one-on-one -on -one type of energy. Now, for others of you, this could symbolize a person coming back around uh, around uh, and this is a person from the past that's trying to make some type of connection here but i feel that what they're telling you is with this major transition that's happening you need to let go of things that are no longer serving you scorpio and this is uh, this includes entertaining people from the past i feel that this person from the past that's coming back around could be in connection with the star card here and the eight of cups for some of you guys this is actually making a decision to walk away from a relationship that is just not working out for you and for the month of may they may come back around or start to look for you or want to uh do some type of reconciling but again don't entertain that that is not working for you anymore now for the month of june we have the five of cups and the three of cups um so again this could be a situation where uh you are feeling a bit emotional for some emotional in the sense of um i feel that for some of you guys this could be a situation that arises in june and something in connection with a friend or a person that is very close to you uh where there's going to be feeling of like being let down or for some of you guys this could even be the situation that they were speaking very highly about family dynamic uh this could be uh, the Five of Cups is like really hurting or mourning a, a loss of a relationship or um, hurting in regards to, like I said, being let down. And I think it's coming for some of you guys. It could come with the Three of Cups. It could come through with friendships. For some of you guys, a lot of friendships are ending. Um, and this is, you know, you may be put in a state of mind where you feel like you were let down or like you feel uh, that they you know, took advantage of your trust uh, in them. Nonetheless, um, with this conjunction, a lot of endings are unfolding. And sometimes that's okay, Scorpio. Sometimes it's necessary for us to cut the ties and the links to people that are no longer uh, helping us in any shape, way, or form to grow. Uh, this could be a situation where you find out that a person that you trusted or a friend um, you know, was either not happy for your growth or uh, a situation where you feel like they kind of betrayed your trust or they step, um, they stepped on your toes or they uh, were trying to have the upper hand in a situation. So again, um, instead of resisting that, embrace that change. Uh, try the best you can not to dwell in so much in the loss or the feeling of being let down but more as be thankful that the universe is showing you, truly showing you people's true intentions. And um, you don't want to deal with people that are, you know, two-faced type of energy. Now for the month of July, major change, you guys. We have here the Empress card with the Tower. Now the Tower doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing. It's just a representation that something is coming in sudden. And it's going to quickly shift your perspective or it's quickly going to change your life for the better. With the Empress card, I feel that for some of you guys, this is like a pivotal moment where there is a career up, massive career opportunity. For others of you, this could be like um, getting, uh, literally transforming your career or your path for some of you guys, changing careers. Uh, for others of you, this is like really turning a passion or something that you're very passionate and intense about, uh, turning it into a long-term business or turning it into um, something that is going to bring you a lot of abundance, a lot of prosperity here. Uh, definitely write this down in your calendar because this is this energy is coming through like really strong. I feel like almost 
like everything is like just spinning really really fast but i can see um uh, what's coming to mind is almost like a bar like a bar of gold so it could represent um being able to be focused like laser focused on what you're wanting to manifest for some of you guys the manifestation comes in in july for others of you uh like i said it could be a career change that is going to ultimately bring to you the financial stability you've been looking for now for the month of august we have here the eight of wands and the eight of pentacles so yeah I feel that for a lot of you guys, there's going to be a change happening here in July that is connected to your finances, that is connected to your business, that is connected to the way you make money. Uh, going into August, uh, really putting in those long hours or, you know, being very focused into attention and detail. Um, very quick movement here in a positive way because a lot of financial growth is happening here. Uh, with the Eight of Wands and the Eight of Pentacles, for some of you guys, this could represent new love coming in. And it could come in through uh, someone that works around you or you meet someone while they're working type of energy for August. Now, for the month of September, we have here the Three of Pentacles and the Ace of Cups. So that's exactly what I was getting right here with the Eight of Pentacles and the Eight of Wands. For some of you guys, this is meeting a person uh, that is connected to work or you meet them while they're working um, this is a building or the beginning to build on a solid foundation with the three of pentacles and the ace of cups this is love overflowing this is uh, being able to feel emotionally fulfilled for some of you guys this could be a breakthrough in career or finances where by the month of october you're feeling very happy very excited very blessed uh, for this major change that is happening at this point. I feel that you guys are definitely seeing the manifestations of uh, the finances that is really growing or coming in for you. Um, now going into, <clears throat> that was what, July, August, September. Oh, that was September, sorry. Okay, so that was August and September, okay? <laughs> Now going into October, we have the Six of Wands and the Queen of Swords. So feeling very confident, you guys. I feel that in the month of October, which is your month, you're definitely going into this month feeling very empowered, uh, feeling very proud of yourself. For some of you guys, this is getting accolades. This is people around you really uh, taking notice of what you're doing or uh, the hard work that you've been putting with the Queen of Swords. I feel that... Uh, you're definitely very empowered. You are basically uh, very methodical in the decisions or moves that you're taking. Uh, very positive um, energy here. I feel that the Six of Wands is definitely going to bring to you guys a lot of attention. This could be positive attention. This could be negative as well. Um, but here's the thing. When it comes to reputation and when it comes to business, uh, you know, I always say whether it's good or bad talk, it's, it's always good at the end of the day. Why? Because they have your name in their mouth and people are talking and people are around you and people are seeing the hard work or um, the stepping up, the leveling up in your life. And they're definitely taking notice for sure. Now, for the month of November, we have the Queen of Cups and the High Priestess. Uh, so these two cards, very intuitive. You're going to be feeling... I feel that for November, you guys are definitely going to be feeling like you're making decisions mostly or purely made off of your intuition. And this is a positive thing because with the Queen of Cups, you're very emotionally attuned. This is your card, Scorpio. And with the High Priestess, the High Priestess is all knowing. It is, you know, she only speaks when it's necessary, not just to talk. Uh, she only addresses certain issues only when it's necessary. And I feel that this is the type of energy that you're going to be feeling for the month of November almost like for some of you guys this could even represent that you're like so busy that you don't really have time to be social or being out there and people are really wondering like what's going on why aren't you really coming around um, but the positive in this energy is that they're saying you know uh, if you have to pull your energy or if you have to pull yourself away from certain people or certain situations 
do it because it you don't want other things to distract you i feel very momentum energy momentous energy here uh with the queen of cups and the high priestess uh listen to your intuition like i said i feel that listening to your intuition is really going to benefit especially for those of you guys that either run your own business or are starting a new business and finally we have for december we have the Knight of Swords and the Wheel of the Year. This is you laser focused, going in, making shit happen. Uh, with the Wheel of the Year, the wheel is turning. This is striking luck as well. Uh, with the Knight of Swords, this is you taking ownership and making things happen. You know how people say, uh, like if they see a certain individual really doing good and they're like, oh my God, they're so lucky. Scorpio is here to say, you know, it's not about luck, it's about hard work, determination, and making things happen, and you're definitely making things happen, although people around you may find or think that you're being very lucky this year uh, in your finances, in reality, with the wheel of the year in, and the knight of swords, this is you really taking charge and really making shit happen. For some of you guys, this could be changing residency. For others of you, is purchasing homes or property. Uh, very positive, positive reading for you guys. I want to wish you guys the very best. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely comment below and let me know. Like, share, and comment this video uh, so that we can do uh, these types of videos at the end of the year, preparing us to kick off the new year. So I wish you guys the best. Happy holidays, and we'll see each other soon. Bye.